Hey, it's Rami, and I'm back with another sound card video. Um, recently, I made a video about the Pentium 3 putting a Sound Blaster 16 in there to go alongside the Sound Blaster Live. And I figured, you know, maybe I could use the Gravis Ultrasound and put that alongside my Sound Blaster 16 in my 486. Um, so I've got the Gravis right here. Um, really nice card. I had to have a review of this card, a little overview, not really like a full review. I recommend watching LGR's review for like a really, really in-depth history and, you know, review of the card. But today I'm going to use this to install next to the Sound Blaster 16 so that I can get the sound working alongside the Sound Blaster. All right, so here's my 486. This is the big ass 486 that I built. I haven't showed this one really much as, except I did show it in the other Gravis review, but yeah, basically this is like my ultimate 486. It's a freaking beast. I love this thing. And it's already got a Sound Blaster 16, which is nice, but I wanna do some tracker music alongside that. So I'm gonna, you know, put the Gravis in there and see if we can get them both working together. The goal is, to get the Sound Blaster and the uh, the Gravis working together in both DOS and at least the Sound Blaster in Windows 3.1 because I I seem to have problems with Windows every time I get this Gus in there, but we'll see if I can work around it this time. All right, here we go again with this. Shit. <laughs> All right, first things first, you gotta make sure you have this. So, I will link this in the description. Um, this will come with like six different disk folders, but you need to make sure that they're all in one big folder. These, 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 these are all the disks. And you run install, and the install program will install everything into the folder called Ultra SMD. Also, make sure you copy this file, gb.exe, copy that into this root C drive right here, or else it'll give you an error. So, with that done, this is the directory for ultrasound. Make sure that you have ultrainit.exe version 2.31. I will link that in the description as well. Without that, you won't get the Sound Blaster working. All right, now we go into the auto exec. Just open it with the edit.com. Now, this is where you add your Gravis ultrasound stuff. So, first of all, you set ultrasound. And this is your base I.O., which you will configure with the jumpers on the card. I'll put a link to the description, which will give you a diagram for those jumpers so that you know which ones control which. And these are your, these are the IRQ and DMA and re recording IRQ and Sound Blaster DMA, which you set through software. Make sure everything is at seven. And the key here is to not make anything conflict with your Sound Blaster. So, We've got Sound Blaster at I5, D1, H5, uh, IRQ5, DMA1, High DMA5, and the ultrasound is all at 7, so nothing is conflicting there, and that's what you want, and that's what you need to get it working. Next, we go to Set Ultra Directory, Ultra DIR, and then it's wherever you installed your ultrasound directory. Most likely this one, because that's the default one. And then you go to that one, and you run Ultra in it. Just like that. And that will initialize your Gravis Ultrasound. 
We'll reboot the computer and see if that worked. Perfect. Now to test it out and see if your Gus is working, just run this mod demo here. Sounds great. Now to test out the Sound Blaster and see if this works. I always use Wolf 3D. One of my favorites. Ad lib and Sound Blaster. Great. Before I get carried away playing this game. <laughs> We're testing it out in Windows, seeing if the Sound Blaster still works. Works well. Perfect. Oh yeah. Can't have Windows 3.1 without some SimCity. Now just to demonstrate this, that both of them are working simultaneously. I'm going to show you Wolf 3D, there's not going to be any jump cuts. And we're going to exit and switch the, the speaker jack between the two sound cards. Right here in real time. Mm. Pardon my cable management. And we're gonna fire up some impulse tracker. Grab this ultrasound. Now, to get the impulse tracker to detect your Gus and not your Sound Blaster 16, you need to delete the uh, the Sound Blaster 16 drivers from the impulse tracker directory. So that's ITSB16, anything with the words ITSB16 in it, and um, the, you know, ITMMXSB16 or ITSB16.MMX or whatever, delete those files, and you shouldn't have any problems with that. So, yeah, Tempest Music. <laughs> So thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. I just wanted to show how to do this if you have a Gravis Ultrasound and a Sound Blaster 16 and an old computer you want to use them in. Uh, I figured out how to get it going so why not share the information with everybody. The key to getting this working is getting the later version of Ultra Init. Make sure that you have Ultra Init version 2.31. I mean it might work with like, you know, 2.2 .2 or whatever. but. 2.31 is what I've got and it's worked for me. So I'm, I'm gonna link that one in the description. I'm gonna link the Gus drivers, the Sound Blaster 16 Dawson Windows drivers. Just everything you need will be in the description if you have a, a setup like this and you wanna get it going. So that's all I have for today. I'll see you next time. Take care.